Yo, what is going on YouTube and in today's video I am bringing you guys a video that I have been planning for quite a bit now I didn't want to actually do this video right when 2k dropped because it wouldn't make any sense to me in my personal opinion like making a top five badges video in each category when the game dropped when I know absolutely nothing about it but now since I've been playing both the gens of the game but this one is going to be for current gen but since I've been playing a lot of current gen I am level 36 at the moment I feel like I know a lot about the game to be able to actually make this video so without further ado please subscribe to the channel it would mean a lot to me please like the video and let's get straight into the finishing badges this is going to be my top five list for each category all right so coming in at the number five spot for finishing badges in this game is going to be mouse in the house now mouse in the house only works if you are taller than your opponent like i believe it has to be like two or three inches taller than your actual opponent but this badge right here is one of the best in the finishing category trust me on this mouse in the house is absolutely broken if you're a big man use this on like gold or hall of fame and you're literally never gonna miss a layup on a smaller defender all right coming in at number four we are going to be talking about the fearless finisher badge this badge improves the ability to convert contact layups it is literally just as it says fearless finisher just makes you be able to just convert those stupid layups that should never go in this badge is absolutely broken. I've seen a lot of my friends using it, and it is absolutely broken. Put it on your player. Next up, we are going to be talking about two badges. I know this is kind of illegal. I did say this is a top five, but I couldn't really decide on these two. Giant Slayer, I feel like, would be the number three, but Unstrippable is kind of just like a must-have badge. It's kind of like that unpluckable of the playmaking section, like protects the ball while trying to do layup or dunk i suggest you guys put on strippable at least on bronze but for number three i'm going to be talking about giant slayer heightens the effectiveness of layups over taller defenders once again you're going to be able to make some stupid 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 layups over taller defenders and all in all this is one of the best badges in the finishing category all right coming in at the second place in my personal opinion the second best finishing badge in this game it is going to be limitless takeoff Favors dunks and layups from a farther, farther takeoff, excuse me, I cannot read, but this badge is literally exactly as it says, you will be able to dunk from further out. I've seen a lot of people do like four straight freaking um, Jordan free throw line dunks with this badge on, it is absolutely broken, but it is not as broken as this next badge, it is going to be posterizer, I mean, what did you guys expect? Improves the likelihood of posterizing your opponent, if you have finishing badges, use hall of fame posterizer because if you get contact dunks i mean that's basically why you're here anyways if you're looking at the best finishing badges if you get contact dunks hall of fame posterizer is the best finishing badge in the game it basically has always been the best finishing badge like the posterizer or like the contact i, I forgot what it was called in previous years but basically hall of fame posterizer in my personal opinion is the best finishing badge in the game i'm gonna give an honorable mention to another finishing badge here and it's gonna be slithery finisher this one is not as good in my personal opinion because if you have contact dunks, then Slithering Finisher actually helps you avoid contact when attacking the rim. But just in general, this badge is not as good as previous years in my personal opinion after using it on my LeBron build. Now with that being said, let's get straight into the shooting category. Alright, so coming in at number 5 for the shooting badges category, this in my personal opinion after looking at all of the shooting badges is the most difficult category to be able to put into a top five but i feel like i've got it so coming in at number five is going to be hot zone hunter now i did not say in the finishing badges category that you can use these on literally any i was just putting them on hall of fame because obviously it's the max that it can go but all of these badges that i'm putting in order are amazing on each tier like bronze to hall of fame but with that being said hot zone hunter is going to be the first badge i am talking about in the shooting badges category obviously you guys know what hot zone hunter is you get hot spots all around the court. You put Hot Zone Hunter on. It lets you shoot way better. Last year, this was one of the best badges. This year, in my personal opinion, with how the shooting is, it is not that necessary to be able to shoot. All right, so coming in at number four in the shooting badges category, we are going to be talking about Stop and Pop. Boosts the shot rating on standstill three-pointers after dribbling. It is exactly how it sounds. You dribble, and then this badge actually allows you to do those peaks that you guys remember from 2K20. If you guys don't know what a peak is, it's basically just shooting directly after dribbling very fast without having to you know quick stop or anything like that this is one of the best badges in the game i very much recommend it um obviously it's a number four in the shooting badges category but these 
from one through four could literally be interchangeable at any moment these are the in my personal opinion these are the best four badges in the game to be able to score all right now we're getting a little bit more toxic we are going to be talking about a number three mismatch expert receive less of a penalty when shooting over tall defenders when i first saw this badge as they were announcing 2k22 i was like this badge makes absolutely no sense but I just kind of knew that a badge like this would be absolutely broken. And guess what? In 2K22, this badge is absolutely broken. Like this, I, I can't stress how these next three badges, like how absolutely broken they are. These might be some of the most broken badges in 2K history. But on this list, it'll be number three. But once again, numbers one through four could literally be interchangeable. But number three, like I said, will be Mismatch Expert. And we're not going to waste any more time. At number two, we are going to be talking about blinders. If you guys played NBA 2K21 Next Gen, you guys know all about blinders. I mean, the, this badge and mismatch expert. If you rock both of these in Hall of Fame, and you're like a and like you're like a shorter guard, like six foot one, six foot two, you literally cannot be contested ever on the three point line. Blinders is the number two best badge in NBA 2K22 in, in terms of the shooting category. And at number one, you guys could have probably guessed this by an absolute mile. I am going to be talking about the most controversial badge so far in this game, Sniper. Exaggerates the impact of good and poor shot timing. This badge, I don't know if it was like, I don't know if it was made to be flexible release. I don't know what they were thinking with this badge. But if you rock this on Hall of Fame, I actually have a Twitter clip on my Twitter of me shooting six for six, all three pointers, all whites. This badge, if you put this on, literally, you don't even have to time your shot correctly. Obviously, you have to get, like, slightly late, slightly early, but, like, you don't even have to green to be able to make shots. I mean, going 6 for 6 from 3 is literally stupid. All you have to do is get it within the green window, and with this badge, if you have it on Hall of Fame or Gold or even Silver, for God's sakes, then you will literally, everything will just go in. This is the best badge in 2K22. All right, so coming in at number five, this is going to be multiple badges. I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, Chris, you're cheating. This is a top five list. But okay, hear me out. This is the playmaking section. This is all just depending on how you want to play the game. But these, in my personal opinion, are the top five ones. I know I'm saying top five and I'm going to be putting multiple badges at number five. But just hear me out, okay? You guys are going to understand. So at top, at number five, technically, I'm going to be ranking Floor General dimer and unpluckable i know what you guys are thinking unpluckable why why how does that correlate to these other badges well i can't uh, yes i could make a top five list with playmaking badges but putting unpluckable in it is kind of boring because you guys all know that you need unpluckable and putting that in the top five list is kind of it's kind of boring in my personal opinion but obviously i've wanted to put unpluckable in as an honorable mention but more 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 so these this for the top five is going to be two badges. It's going to be interchangeable. You guys know Floor General and Dimer. Floor General and Hall of Fame obviously gives a plus four boost. It, it all depends. Like the, the boost that you get all depends on the tier of the badge. Like gold gets plus three. Silver gets plus two. Bronze gets plus one. And then obviously no Floor General gives nothing. But Hall of Fame Floor General gives a plus four to all attributes to your teammates. And then Dimer. You guys know how good Dimer is. I mean... I don't really have to explain. Dimer's been in the game since like, I don't even know, like 2K14. Literally one of the best badges every single year. It always helps your teammates to be able to shoot. Now let's get into the fourth, the actual fourth best playmaking badge in the game. All right. So the, my personal opinion, the fourth best playmaking badge in this game is going to be Bullet Passer. Improves a player's ability to quickly pass the ball. This badge right here, basically all it does, it speeds up your passes. If you are a guard and you do not use Bullet Passer, what on earth are you doing? This badge literally just makes your passes absolutely lightning quick. So it is coming in at number four on my list. All right, coming in at number three on the Playmaking Badges category, it is going to be Handles for Days. Reduces the amount of energy lost when performing dribble moves. You guys know what Handles for Days is. Basically, it does not drain your stamina as much when you are dribbling with this badge on now i will say this badge is not as good as previous years because believe it or not the stamina in this game is actually good it's crazy isn't it nba players are actually able to dribble for more than five seconds at a time without fumbling the basketball that's pretty crazy isn't it now all jokes aside handles for days is very good not as good as previous years but it is still very good to have now this right here 
I know I said this in the shooting badges category, but this right here might be the toughest thing to rank. These two playmaking badges are literally like 1A, 1B. Like, I don't even know what to compare it to. These two best playmaking badges in the game. I am quickly leaning more towards quick chain other than quick first step. Quick first step does help a lot. Do not get me wrong. But quick chain improves the ability to quickly chain dribble moves together. If you guys saw my dribble tutorial from the other day, this badge is literally the reason why that you can dribble so fast in this game. So I think quick chain is the best planking badge in the game and quick first step is number two. I know what you guys are thinking. What about hyperdrive? I've literally used this badge in Hall of Fame and have not noticed a single difference. There is a lot of badges in this game that you do not actually notice a difference with. There's also Needle Threader. I don't really use Needle Threader. My personal opinion, I think Bullet Passer is better. Bailout, obviously you want to rock that on Bronze. And then I know there's a new badge called Glue Hands. I also like to rock, rock this on Bronze. Bailout and Glue Hands are kind of like the Bronze badges. So I guess those are some um, honorable mentions for the playmaking badges. But in terms of the number two and number one, I'm going to go with Quick First Step number two and then Quick Chain, the best playmaking badge in the game. Literally, as soon as you get playmaking badges, put Quick Chain on. This badge is broken. All right, so I'm going to be honest with you guys. After looking at after, after looking at these defensive badges for locks, um, I don't actually know if I could do a top five because I know the title says top five, and I have been sticking to the top five. But for the defensive badges, I'm going to kind of change it up and just tell you guys the best defensive badges for locks. This, in my personal opinion of what I'm about to show you guys, is the best for locks. Right here. Boom. And then you put pickpocket on and then pick dodger. This, I think, right here is going to be your best defensive badges if you are a pure lock right there. Clamps Hall of Fame, Menace Hall of Fame. Um, we could even bump, like, I think we could bump these down and then put rebound chaser like that. I'm just telling you guys the best badges for locks because I literally could not make... I was sitting here for, like, a cool 15 minutes, sitting here, trying to figure out how to make a top five list for locks with 30 defensive badges. I'm an absolute idiot. I hope you guys... Cut me some slack for this, but in my personal opinion, these, like, I can't, I cannot decide on one that's better than the other. Like, what I was leaning towards in terms of my top five was Clamps, uh, Menace, Pickpocket, Intimidator, Chase Down, but then I'm like, what about Interceptor? What about Pick Dodger? I, I literally don't know what to do. And then you're locked down, so you want to use Rebound Chaser because you get high rebounding, and then you want to use Rim Protector, obviously, and you might want to even use Box. See? Defensive category, it's just so, like, there's so many badges to use in this game. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to show you guys what I think you should use as a big man if you are a pure inside and you have 30 defensive badges. All right, so if you are a big man with 30 defensive badges, I think something like this looks very, very, very good in this game. Hall of Fame Rebound Chaser, Hall of Fame Rim Protector, Hall of Fame Brick Wall, Hall of Fame Interceptor, Hall of Fame Intimidator, those are the Hall of Fame badges. Then you have Gold Box, Gold Chase Down Artist, and then Silver Clamps, and then Silver Worm. Oh, that is the defensive badges category. I never want to visit this ever again. Trying to make a top five of this absolutely hurt my soul. I apologize for not going like how the video was the previous times. I literally, when I came to this category, I literally just could not decide. I apologize, guys. All right, with that being said, that is today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please, please drop a like. Please sub because the stress I just endured... Trying to rank these defensive badges literally just took like 15 years off of my life. I am going to cry in a corner after I am done with this video because of this. I love you guys, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to be back with another video either tomorrow or the next day. That's how I'm kind of scheduling myself. I love you guys, man. Have a wonderful day.